14-day challenge. I'm Tim Stewart and I'm ready for the 14-day challenge. My name is Tor Lowry and my mission is to make the game of pool easy for everybody. And I've traveled thousands of miles to help league and tournament players reach a level they've only dreamed of. And in some cases I have only two hours to find and correct their problems, so I have to teach at high speed. But for those that have 14 days, I'm going to forever change how they view this game. I'm going to show them an easier way to play this great game of pool. In 14 days, 14 days. So after New York, I drove to Boston, Massachusetts, where I met up with two great guys, Tim and Richard. Both players are looking to improve their pool game. Uh, my name is Tim Lee. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, I've been playing pool literally from 10 to 15 years. Uh, for the last couple of years, I started getting a little bit easy, uh, serious because you know we all work, we have much time to play, families, kids stuff, everything. Until like almost about a year ago, and I found Taurus on a YouTube video, and I start watching it, get very interesting. Things and I learned a lot from the video, so I decided to give it a shot. And I feel very, very happy and fortunate that Taurus picked me. And today is my day, it's my first training day with Taurus. And uh, my game is I like to play nine ball, ten ball, some eight balls. And uh, my goal is I would like to play this game at my best level. Uh, try to be as good as a pro, if not, my goal at least I have to be an open player. Right now, I am somewhere between a C and a B player. And this is my chance, this is my one lifetime chance for the tourist, and very happy, excited. And again, I'm very, very appreciative of the tourist to all to help me improve my game. And I won't let you down. Thank you. So we'll check back on Tim later to see how he did after his training. But first, I arrived at Amazing Billiards to start training Richard. And this is a great little pool room owned by billiard champion, Mason Shuni. And we only had four days to transform Richard's game. So on the first day, I had him play some ghost pool so I could see where some of his problems are. Boston, Massachusetts, and I wanted to meet with Tor because I had uh, multiple problems. I've been playing off and on for about 30 years. My goal is I'd like to be, be able to run the balls without getting into trouble and find myself making balls somehow, but it was never pretty. And I'd like to start, uh, I'd like to move up a level in tournaments, I'll start doing good in tournaments. And it didn't take long to realize that Richard has a tendency to hit balls way too hard. And this is usually the result of incorrect angles and not trusting his stroke. And one issue that Richard needs to correct immediately is his stance. He has a tendency to face away from the shot when he's shooting, and his left foot is too close to the shooting line. Let's try again. Let's try to get your uh, stick on the shooting line.
Yeah, your foot's a little bit better there. It's not pointing away from the shell like it was before. And you're stepping into their shell like this. You're kind of coming over and you're already planting your feet and then you're getting down. Okay. So let's just get your shooting line. And make sure your distance from the table is correct. You don't want to be too far back for these things. Yeah. And once you have it down, then you kind of step into it with your left foot. There, that's a little better too. Yeah, that looks better. I then had Richard practice shooting with this new stance. And after a while, he started to become a lot more comfortable with it, and he was looking a lot more solid. In the first couple exercises, he has to hit just a small part of the one ball and control the cue ball for a position. Next, I want Richard to learn how to move the cue ball around the table without using left or right English. So we started half table pattern play, which limits his cue ball movement to one half of the table. And I also want him to start stroking through the cue ball better. He'll soon learn that just by stroking through the cue ball correctly, he'll get a lot more action on the cue ball than just hitting the cue ball hard. And I also want Richard to learn how to use the rails for position. This is extremely important if you want to start playing precise angles. What you mean? I'm just going to try to come out to here and then try to bring the cue ball over here off the tube. Yeah, the cue ball is good. But instead of trying to get perfect here, uh, you know, if you get up a little bit short like this, you may have to shoot the corner. Uh, Put the here, put this here, you pick a spot on that side ground. Like you want to bounce off the two and a half. Now that gives you a natural angle, so you just go like this. Okay. Yeah, and the reason you pick a spot is if you hit it too easy, look what happens. It's still at the angle. If you hit it too hard, look what happens. It's right. still at the angle. The way you're going, you gotta get precise, right? This way, if you just come toward a target, your window is much bigger. This isn't a power shot, you just want to scroll through it. That's perfect. You give yourself a little bit more angle. Instead of trying to halfway stun it, yeah. you can roll. You can just give yourself a little more angle. Control going this way to be really good. And here's an example of why correct angles are so important. If Richard stops the cue ball here and just rolls the three ball into the pocket, his cue ball will travel in this direction, leaving him a long shot in the four ball. So at this angle, he's gonna to have to use more force to keep the cue ball closer to the four ball. But 
If he just draws the cue ball back just a few inches on the two ball, the angle is going to do all the work for him, which means all he has to do is roll the ball into the pocket. Next, Richard had to start developing a soft stroke for draw. And this is important for not only drawing the cue ball, but also for killing the cue ball. And one problem that many players have is that when they have an angle on an object ball, they find it difficult to kill the cue ball. And what Richard has to learn is that a nice little draw stroke will minimize any angle on the object ball. And this will enable him to hold the cue ball for a position. So in the final couple of days we worked on full table pattern play with an emphasis on rolling the cue ball and playing correct angles. Yeah. Where how are you gonna hit that ball? It's pretty good. And this one isn't ideal. I mean the ideal shot would be here where you can just roll it. Yeah. Here you can't really roll. You have to use a little bit of low on that. Low right. So by the time the cue ball gets to the three ball, it's gonna have a little bit of low on it. Low right, never bring it like that. And when we came across a problem shot, we would sticker it up and shoot it over and over and over again. Yeah, this shot I missed a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> I always blow by the pocket. <laughs> because you come at this angle, it's going to throw it away from the pocket. So what you have to do is you got to find your ideal spot, which is right here. And then you got to overcome it. 
Because of friction, it's going to cause your core blood to always go this way to the point. So now you just have to overcut it. You almost shouldn't have more toward this point. And once things started to click for Richard, he started moving that cue ball around the table with much less effort than before. He started to trust in his stroke more and realized that the key to cue ball control is stroke, not power. Yeah, I couldn't figure out. I thought I thought I was moving, you know, because I've watched a bunch of videos, and uh, you know, they always, you know, they talk about doing certain things. I thought I thought I might have been crooked coming in, or or holding too high, or, um, so that was. I thought that's the reason why I'm stuck at the level I am. Although, you know, this, I kind of capped out where I am because of my stroke, and uh, turns out I'm just. Overpowering every shot. Every every shot was max draw, max follow. And now that I'm using the angles, I hit the ball a lot softer. I have a lot more cue control right now already. And it's only been a few days. As I finished my training with Richard, I ran into Tom McGonigal. He's in the New England Pool and Billiard Hall of Fame, and he's also author of Ride on Cue, a love story that takes place around the game of pool. So I asked him to talk about his book and a little bit about his life playing pool. 
book was published. I self-published this story in 2008, November of 2008. So far, I've sold close to 2,000 copies. Uh, as a self-published book, it's considered the bestseller. And it's, uh, it's available on Amazon. Go to Amazon.com and just go into books, type in right in the queue. It's a fiction novel, actually. It's based on a bunch of uh, ideas I had. It's about a, a young boy who uh, finds out his paternal father isn't the one he thinks it is. It's, uh, it's a pool player. And uh, they get to know each other. It's, it, it's actually the first story that invent, involves both men and women pool players as featured characters which I think is very important in this game because the women are very popular, they're well known, and uh, why not try to get the next gender into the uh, young people, into the game. But it's a fiction novel, it's a love story. It's kind of my version of the hustle, I like to say. And it takes place in uh, starts in California and eventually comes to Kentucky. So it, uh, there's lots of pool action? Yes. And then, okay. Yes. A ton of pool. That's good. But there is adult material, so don't let someone who shouldn't read it read it. The first game of pool I actually played was a straight pool match with a buddy of mine who got a pool table. He was a year older than me, and he had been playing pool for six months. And we went over his cellar and we started playing a game of straight pool. So in the beginning, he was going to spot me 500 balls to 600 because I had never picked up a cue. So we started playing, and the game took a week. And I was going backwards faster than I was going forward as I scratched a lot. And it came down to, uh, he eventually spotted me 575 balls out of 600. And he missed his game ball. And I needed seven balls to win the game. And I don't know how I did it, but I managed to run seven balls and win the game. And within three months, I was spotting him 25 to 50. So I started playing one day and then it didn't look like there was a hot shot on the table. I, I was very fortunate in that way. And I played a lot of ring games where you had a shoot. You know, there was no push out. You either had to be creative or, or wait till your next turn, which could be who knows when. You know, were, the ring games I played in were really tough, tough ring games. And uh, I managed to do very well in that. But, you know, you're, you're kicking your balls a lot of times when you're starting out. You play in combinations. Uh, you have a shoot at every show. But I played pool. It was like a part-time job for me. It was something I really enjoyed doing. And again, I was good at it. I, I, I won the uh, New England Nine Ball Championship three consecutive years. I won a lot of, I won seven Joss events, which used to be the All About Pool Tour. And uh, locally, uh, within New England, I did very well in the uh, Eastern States Nine Ball Championships. They used to have in New London, Connecticut. I was a virtual unknown in uh, one year. I mean, the first year I played nine ball, I managed to come in third. I beat uh, a guy named Ray Martin, three-time world champion. And, uh, I, uh, that was kind of my coming out party to be recognized as a first-rate pool player. I had actually put down my cue for five years in the game of pool. I played a lot of three cushion billiards because I couldn't find a game around here. I didn't want to go into Boston. And most of the pool players that I grew up with were in Vietnam or coming home from Vietnam. And it was hard to find people to play. So I played a lot of three cushion billiards and didn't play pool for five years in that stretch. I'm uh, going up to the BCA uh, Nationals in uh, July, starting July 17th. I'll be out there, I'm playing in the seniors event, which I won in 2010. And I'm also going to play in a team event out there. The, the, the Snookers, Snookers has a nice tournament coming up, a $5,000 first prize. I hope to qualify for that. But I, I just, I come here most days and I, I play anybody that walks in the door. It's a nice one.